Hello moms. This might be one of the most important episodes, especially right now in this time of homeschools, that how to be a nice mom when you have teenagers. That's hard. And right now we're all praying to Jesus that they can make it through alive and we can make it through alive. But let me share with you six things that have really rocked my world in my home that have helped me and my teenagers relationship blossom and grow. Number one, adjust your expectations. I had to learn that my daughter's room is going to be messy and I can't continually bug and bug and bug her because I want to end up beating her, <laughs> which I don't, but I don't want to feel that way. So I have to adjust my expectations. I have to learn to love her where she's at. And she does so many other things that are great. So I had to learn to be like, okay, she's gonna have a messier room. I have other children that are clean in their rooms, but they have different strengths. So when we learn to adjust our expectations, that has helped me be so much more successful as a mom. Number two, love them where they're at. They're trying their best. Just like we as moms are trying our best. So we need to love them where they're at. If they're not doing what we think they should be doing, that's okay. Love what they are doing. Recognize their efforts. And when we do that and when we cheer them on, I have seen the relationship with my daughter blossom and grow when I chose to look at what she did do right instead of what she wasn't doing. When I stopped criticizing her and shifted my mindset to what is she doing right? I need to praise her on that. I need to vocalize that. I need to tell her that more. I need to show her the love for what she is doing. That softened both of our hearts and helped our relationship. So number two, love them where they're at. And we're not perfect, neither are they. They're on their own journey. And no matter where they're at in their journey, we just need to love them. We just need to love them as moms. And that takes a lot of pressure for us moms off that they don't have to be doing everything we want them to be doing because they're not robots, neither are we. We just have to let them be them and love them. Number three, this is a hard one for me. This is really hard. Number three is apologize when you're wrong. Apologize when you made a mistake. Now, a couple months ago, Niska got in a little fender bender and I asked her permission if I could share the story and she said yes. So she got in a little fender bender, easy peasy, right? Exchanged insurance information. Well, she needed to call our insurance and follow up on a thing. So I reminded her, hey Niska, you need to call and follow up on this insurance thing. Okay, okay, okay. Five days go by, another five days go by. I mention it to her, oh, oh yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, okay? Another couple days go by, I get a call. We get kicked off our insurance. Okay? <laughs> Freak out mode as a mom, okay? So Niska comes in the house and I'm ready to like, the vengeance of mom rained down upon her. And I had all reason to. I was validated in my sh complete, sheer, and utter frustration. She didn't do what she was supposed to do. She didn't follow through. And in that, left a huge mistake and a lot of money that we needed to pay to fix the relapse on the insurance. It was just a total headache, right? But wrong, here where I go wrong, okay? I yelled at her. I completely, I went at her like a sailor, like bleep, diddy bleep, bleep, explicitives. I was so completely pissed. And in my mind, I was justified. Like, that was uncalled for, that was horrible. That was so careless and irresponsible. Why would you do that? And then I let it all out. Have you done that before? Have you been in an argument where you just were able to say exactly what you wanted to say? And then about 30 minutes later, you felt really bad for saying what you said? That's exactly what happened to me, okay? So I yelled at my daughter, then I go up to my room and washing my hair in my shower, which I do this frequently, and I think, I'm kind of a butthole as a mom. You know, it's hard. Being a mom is hard. And I screwed up, even though I was justified and I, could it just want to beat her? I shouldn't have said those things. I should have been a better example. I don't know. I just was dissatisfied with myself. And then to go to say my prayers that night, I was like, 
I'm sure Heavenly Father is like upset at me lots of times and he is loving and kind and I'm a jerk, okay? But it was really hard for me. The next day I pulled her aside and I just said, Niska, I am so sorry. I am so sorry that I talked to you like that, that I yelled at you like that and I love you and I don't wanna treat you like that. I don't wanna to talk to you like that. You deserve better from me. You deserve a better mom and I'm gonna try my hardest to be better for you. Can you please forgive me? And she looked at me like, <laughs> like I was kidding, like what happened to my mother? And she softened and she looked at me and she said, I'm sorry, mom, I, sh I should have called. And I said, yeah, but I could have called too. And I could have sat with you at the counter. I could have pulled the number out. I could have helped you. So many times we think as our teenagers get older, we think they're like adults and they should be functioning and doing things like we expect them to do. But they're still little. They're still little people that are still learning how to be people. And we as people don't even get our life sometimes. So how can we expect our teenagers to get their lives? It's hard. It's hard to do that. So number three, this huge pill to swallow of apology. Like, get it out there. And I found the more I have apologized, the better my daughter and my relationship has gotten. So it's a little easier with my son on our relationship, but still, if I am extra hard and have these high expectations that they don't meet, I then get so upset and angry and mad. And I have found myself just really trying to, to apologize when I've offended them or when I feel like I've been mean. So give them that, give them their apologies because guess what? As I have done that, my kids have been more likely to apologize when they do things that hurt my feelings or that offend me. And it's been so beautiful to see. Be humble, be kind. And when you can apologize, that's teaching them. That's helping them learn, that's helping them grow. And you're being an example. And I love that. I love that. We can do it. We can do it. We can apologize when we're mean. Number four, speak their language. We all feel love in different ways. So I have learned to hone in on what works for my teenagers and what works for my nine-year-old. It's different. What works for my daughter that's a teenager is different than what works for my son that's a teenager. So as I've really prayed and tried to pour my heart out to Heavenly Father, to help me and my daughter's relationship because she's 16. In two years, she's gonna be 18 and an adult. And do I want her to leave my nest with not having a good relationship with her mom? No. And I prayed so hard over the last several months. Heavenly Father, help me learn how to be a good mom to her. What does she need individually? And as I've done that, my Heavenly Father has brought thoughts and ideas to my mind of what's gonna help me and my daughter's relationship which has been hugs, which has been cheering her on, which has been playing cards with her. And as I've done that and learned her specific language, our relationship has blossomed and grown. And it's been a lot easier for me to be nicer when she's nicer. Number five, communication. Instead of yelling, I have found I will back up and try to calmly talk to my teenagers. When I do that, it makes me more approachable to them as I was going and mulling through this episode of what I wanted to talk about, I, I pulled my teenagers. And this actually was from my daughter who was, who was 16, who said, communication, mom, you've gotten a lot better at communication. And I just looked at her and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. But we do, she said, I really love when I'll ask you something and instead of the answer being no, you give me options. So which leads me into number six. Number six is, Give them options. Let them fly or let them fail. Either way, they're gonna learn. And we're there to help them. We're there to be their cheerleaders. We're there to love them. We're there to just adore them. And it's hard when you have a bad relationship. And God knows exactly what works for them. God knows exactly what works for you. And if you go to him, he will give you that inspiration to help your relationship with your children because I know it. I know it, I've lived it, and I've experienced it. So um, Niska had her dad pass away from cancer. And I know that there's angels that have passed that listen to us. So several months ago, I was fed up with Niska. I was frustrated. Um, I was frustrated with myself. I was frustrated with the way I talked to her and treated her. And I, I, that night, I just clenched. 
my late husband, if you're there, I need your help. I need to know how to help Niska. I need to know what to do. And then I got on my knees and I prayed and I thought about it and I pondered and little by little, every day since then, that was like several months ago, our relationship has been so much better. That's when it's brought those ideas to my mind of what I've shared with you today to do. And as I have done those things that I have shared with you, our relationship has got so much better. I feel like we have a friendship. I feel like I love her more and want to be around her and she wants to be around me. And it's great to be a mom. Like every day, my life is highly imperfect, but I love my life. I love my children and I love the opportunity to let them know I'm imperfect. And the more that I've done that, it has helped our relationship blossom and grow. And it kind of gives them the room to be like, I'm not perfect either. And we're all just getting through this together. If you are having a hard time being nice to your teenagers, try this out. Try out my tips and see, is it working for you? Or what does work for you? Do you have a great relationship with your teenagers? Leave your secrets, share it, let us know. And I hope as you apply these six things that'll help you be nicer to the teenagers in your lives and in your home. And remember, when it's hard, don't forget to put on your big girl pants.